The one thing that I always wanted to do in life more than anything else was to make games. It was my life's ambition as a kid and all the way up until the end of university I always thought that by now I would either be working at a game studio or I would have set up my own game company and I would spend most of my time making games. Well obviously that didn't happen. I'm here on YouTube and I have a day job in an IT company so where did everything go wrong? Why did I stop making games, and why did I want to make them in the first place? Well, all that came flooding back the other day when I went to visit my nan, and she found all of these original ideas and artwork and random things that I made as a kid for a massive game franchise that I had in my head. So I went back into the loft and picked out all of my old gaming projects from college, from university, and I'm going to share all that in today's video. I am going to get into a few darker topics than usual, so if you don't want to hear about things like depression and anxiety and burnout, then maybe this isn't the episode for you. But for everyone else, here is my game dev journey and ultimately why I gave up on my game dev dream. So we'll start first with the early years, and like I said when I went to visit my nan, she gave me this folder here, which is decorated with all of these different monsters that I'd created, called Spot Slimes, and in there as well is this lovely photo of me as a kid. So this is the guy whose dream it was to become a game designer. And here is all of the random things that he came up with back then. Spot Slimes wasn't the first thing, there were some other things here. So there is this, called The Blob, and this was a series of games, this one's actually The Blob 3, and I think it went all the way up to like The Blob 5 or something, The Blob 4 and 5, here we go, and this is the original piece of paper with my original drawings on, The Blob Collection, The Blob 4 and 5. It's just so cool for me to be able to hold this exact same piece of paper that myself about 20, 25 years ago at this point drew all of these ideas down on, it's so interesting to look at where my head was back then but obviously the main obsession with me back then and something that i thought would become a massive game franchise was my game idea called spot slimes so there was this spot slimes folder here and this is just full of various different pieces of paper scribbles random monster designs and things and as well as that, I also used to make a weekly magazine or a weekly newspaper article called Spot Slime Weekly, which I would make for my uncle and he would sit down and humour me for a few hours while I was coming up with all these crazy ideas. And we actually have some of these original entries right here. And as you can see, they were made in Microsoft Publisher, I think. That's why we've got this sort of grid layout. I remember having a lot of fun with Microsoft Publisher back on like Office 95 or whenever that was. It was just so, so much fun to have a look back over all these old ideas. Here's another one here. There was an ongoing story where someone stole a tent from a spot slime called Josie who lived on a different planet or something and it was your job to try and track her down. There is one more spot slime related thing that I need to show off here and I've managed to keep this with me all throughout life. If you've noticed in my previous videos it's actually hanging up on the back of the shelf right there and I've taken it off for this episode. This is, that bit there is the parachute and here's the cords attached to it. This is the Indian Spot Slime, which my mum made for me based off my design ideas. And the story behind this particular Spot Slime is that he flies in the engines of jet planes flying over India, and when they fly over India, he dives out and uses his parachute to go down to the ground and just live in India, I guess. I didn't really think any more further ahead than that, but he is my favourite Spot Slime design, and I drew him so many times as a kid. So to actually have a physical reminder of my childhood like game dev ideas from back then. It's just so cool, so I'm trying to keep him around as long as possible. I did, of course, attempt to make all of these random spot slime ideas into games, but back then I had no programming knowledge whatsoever. The best I could do was to make random games in Microsoft PowerPoint, which I did do a lot. In fact, I actually made a video on this channel a few years back when I actually found those original PowerPoint games on a few floppy disks that were stored away with an old computer. So if you want to see more of these insane designs and games in more detail, 
definitely check that video out from a few years ago. But in this one, I've actually got a lot more interesting things that we've never shown off on the channel before. And as well as all of those random PowerPoint games, there was one massive game that I was working on as well called High Arkin. And for some reason it's all lost to time these days. The floppy disk I found didn't have any of the files on, and the rest of the stuff disappeared along with Hotmail's original stuff from before 2006. So there's no way to get the game back these days. But I did find one thing that I've never shown off before. I found some original notes from what the Hyarkin game was going to be like, including down there, as you can see, a very PowerPoint style screen there with a few different buttons at the bottom. So it's really cool to see this, even though this is like the most that I'll ever be able to see of that game again. And there was actually a bunch of other things that I tried in order to make games. I played around with something called Flash MX back then, and it came with a few pre-built games and I would tinker around with the code in there and see whether I could make my own creations. I never really got anywhere with it though, it just wasn't as intuitive to me as something like PowerPoint was previously, so I did really struggle to get into that side of programming games in a little bit more of a detailed engine. I also tried something called 3D Game Maker, which I really, really loved back then. I remember when we first got our Windows ME PC in the year 2000, and I got 3D Game Maker, and I was just obsessed with making these crazy maze levels and importing my own textures to use as the walls, and it was just a great time. Along with that, I also got another piece of software called Dark Basic, which was supposed to teach you programming, and you can program 3D environments and things, but again, the programming was just way over my head as a kid, I couldn't get anywhere with it at all, but I really enjoyed playing around with the pre-built games and software on there, just to see what it could do, and I remember there was this one where there was like tunnels going off into the distance, and it had the most amazing music, I would just boot it up and listen to the music for hours on end. And it got me really excited about my future with making games. And talking about my future of making games, this is moving on from my early years into my years at college. And I actually found my original school report here, where I mentioned in the back about me going on to study game design and my reasons why. It says, out of school, I enjoy playing Nintendo games. I have an interest in the way the games are made. And also outside of school, I enjoy reading magazines and using the internet. On leaving school, my immediate plan are to go to Shrewsbury College and go on to university to continue studying game design. And that is exactly what I did, so let's take a look now at what I got up to at college. So I said this video was going to take more of a serious turn, and this is kind of where it begins. So when I was leaving school and thinking about what I wanted to do next, as I said in that personal summary, I always wanted to make games. I was fascinated by the history of games and how they were made. And so I looked around at a few different colleges and there was one fairly local to me. So I went to an open day and I got to see what the previous year had done. And I was just so, so excited. I really thought this is my path in life. This is what I want to do with my life. We were sat in the room and they had a big projector on the wall and they were showing off the previous year's projects. And one of the things they'd been doing is using the game engine, Game Maker, in order to make a 2D platformer, which was just my dream. I'd actually tried to do this many times in Flash and PowerPoint, but always given up. So when I saw this being projected onto the wall, I was just so excited and I couldn't wait to start the first semester. Well, that dream was incredibly short-lived because on the first day, we were told what we were going to be doing for that first year, and it was all focused around 3D modeling, which I just wasn't interested in at all. There was no programming. There was no actually making a playable game. It was all 3D modeling. It was drawing, which I hated. I was terrible at drawing, despite all of the spot slime stuff that I drew. It was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to write, I wanted to make something playable, and I just wanted to get my ideas out there, and it didn't seem to be focused on any of that whatsoever, so I really struggled through first year. There were a few good things, though. I enjoyed learning how to use Photoshop, and obviously that skill is still very relevant for me today, with all my YouTube thumbnails and things like that, so it wasn't entirely wasted. I also really loved the photography course that we did in first year as well, which taught me how to dial in the settings on cameras like this one in order to get the right ISO and the f-stop and the aperture and everything like that, so 
yeah, it did help me in several ways, but in terms of making games, it did not live up to my expectations in the slightest. I've actually got some of the stuff here at least, so we can take a look at what some of that coursework looked like. So I found a bunch of things here. Here were some of my game design ideas, and I did enjoy doing the design documents as well. It was just the 3D just did not interest me at all. So the first game here was called Terra Dactyl, and as you can see, there's a brief description about the game on the front page there and then a mind map on this page about all of the different gameplay ideas like the HUD and how the levels interact and stuff. And then you could tell I really didn't care much about this because I knew we weren't actually going to be making a game. But here's a very, very quick and dirty sketch of what one of the levels would have looked like. In my mind, it was kind of something like Panzer Dragoon where you would sort of fly over these environments. And uh, here's my awful, awful skills at 3D Max at the time. So there's a mountain with a river. And there's the height map. You can tell I just did not care in the slightest. I put literally no effort into this whatsoever. And there's my Photoshop of the pterodactyl just blowing up castles and people. And uh, I think the premise is still really cool. I think it's a great idea. But yeah, I did not enjoy doing the drawing and the 3D modeling. I just wanted to make something that you could play. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> there's Big Ben. Wow. You know. Hire me, Ubisoft. I'll make the next Assassin's Creed game for you. Here's some concept buildings, straight out of Mega Man, I think. And another amazing Photoshop. There he is attacking Big Ben. So that was my first game concept, Pterodactyl, and that's as far as it ever went, including a few random 3D models. I think I might have some of the files as well, so if I can find them, I'll put them over the screen here so you can just laugh at my zero talent for 3D modeling. And the other thing I 3D modeled was like a Micro Machine style scene where you would sort of race around, but instead of the track being made of random objects, they were actually made of game cartridges and game boxes, which I thought was a great idea. And I actually did a stop motion with a little foam car that went around as well and then remade it all in 3D And I did a few little experiments in 3D as well with things like physics like balls dropping and things like that But there was nothing actually interactive and then in second year things didn't really improve much from the work point of view We had to make more 3D levels except this time now they would have a 3D camera moving through the levels as well in your game idea Whatever you came up with so I came up with a game called help. I've been shrunk and here's one of the posters that I made to advertise it. And as well as that, something I really enjoyed doing was actually making a mock-up game box for it as well. So here's the box here, Help I've Been Shrunk for the Wii, complete with my own review scores on the back too. So I actually keep that on my shelf with my Wii games and it's such a fun reminder about what I was trying to do back there, despite the fact that we still didn't make anything playable and I was getting very, very annoyed at this point. But we did have to do a lot of design documents and I've got it all here. So here's my design documents for Help I've Been Shrunk, like a level by level rundown about what you would do in the game not that you could do anything in the game because it didn't really exist but anyway all my 3d concepts there's one of the other posters there that one was like you on a ruler fighting a bug um just basically everything like you could link it with the ds i had great fun coming up with all these ideas and there's the control scheme for the wii and there's so much more i'll do some b-roll over this oh there is something very very funny the main character. So if you thought my modeling skills were bad in terms of environment things, well, here is Kurt Blastman. Just bask in his glory. So that was that. That was Help I've Been Shrunk. This was a massive project that took most of the year to do. And to be honest, most of the time, I really wasn't enjoying myself. I was having to do a lot of drawings and a lot of like modeling scenery in 3D. Like Here's a picture of the garden that I made with some really crappy grass and rock textures. So it was things like that. It was just learning how to model basic shapes and how to move the camera around. It wasn't until right at the end of college when I finally did something that I actually wanted to do. And that was actually revisit Flash MX or Flash 2008 or whatever it was at the time, which was actually just before Flash got decommissioned. And I'm so annoyed that as soon as I started finally understanding how to make a game properly, Apple came along and just destroyed Flash entirely, along with any possibility of me making Flash games in the future. So that was a really hard hitting moment for me because I really thought I'd finally latched onto something that I could actually do, even though I had no idea what the code was actually
And it actually turns out that the lecturer also didn't know what the code was doing because he actually only learnt how to program the week before we did and then all he did was print out his code which he managed to get working in the game and give to us to copy line by line with no explanation and it was just a disaster all around but in the end I made this game called On the Edge of Time. It was based on things like Raiden and Toho, it was meant to be a vertical scroll and shooter where you travel to different time periods and it kind of is a vertical scroll and shooter. You can move and shoot things, and you can sort of move to different time periods, which are just the same level over and over again with slightly different backgrounds. But I enjoyed making it, and more than that, I enjoyed writing the story and animating the intro cutscene in Flash as well. I have some of these files still left over on the computer, so here's a quick look at what that final project looked like. So here's when things take another turn for the worst in terms of my game dev career. So towards the end of college, I was thinking about what university I wanted to attend. And because I was so desperate to make something playable, I decided to go into a programming course. And it already falls apart immediately because the course that I applied for was called Portable Game Programming because I was a massive fan Slight, had a slight obsession, I should say, with the Nintendo DS at the time, and I really thought I wanted to make games for Nintendo handhelds. And I've actually got the email that I sent here to the university to say why I decided to apply for that course. At the moment, I'm at Shrewsbury College studying game design, and I've used programs such as 3D Max, Flash, Dreamweaver, and Photoshop, talked about some of my 3D experience, talked about some of my animation and programming experience in Flash, and some of the website creation that I'd done in Photoshop and Dreamweaver as well. So it says here, I decided to choose this course because I would like to have the opportunity to be able to work in a professional environment and develop my skills as a game designer. In the future, I'd like to work in the games industry and I believe that attending your university course will help with me making this dream a possibility. That's what I went into this course telling people that I'd done. By the way, no mention of programming, so why they accepted me onto a programming course which actually required prior programming experience, not just copying things that the lecturer gave you that he came up with a few days earlier, it was a recipe for disaster. So I went off to university for a week before it officially started for like getting to know people and getting to know the environment and the campus and making friends and going to parties and that was all amazing. I loved that. I made some great friends from it and some interesting friends too, shall we say. So that was all great. I went back home for a few more months and then went off to uni in September that year, got stuck in, went to the first lecture and basically found out that there was no one on my course apart from me. Yes, the programming course that I'd signed up for, no one else in the world had signed up for this course outside of me. So when I got there, they didn't know what to do with me. So I wasn't really in a game design course anymore. They actually just decided to lump me in with all of the programmers and the mathematicians as well. So I was doing math classes which I barely scraped to see in maths and I hadn't had to do any maths in college. So already I was way behind in my knowledge on maths. And then to throw me into a programming course on top of that, without any game design at all, by the way, basically a computer science degree without any foundational knowledge. In the very first class that we went to, we were talking about logic gates and operators and electronic components and things, and it was all just completely over my head. And then we went into the programming classes, and in them, it wasn't anything to do with games at all. It was more focused on making databases and making computer software, I think. Like, I don't even know what they were trying to teach. Literally, for the first five months, all we did was learn how to program in C, and basically how to draw things into the command prompt and get it to display in the terminal window. So we did things like making a Christmas tree out of ASCII characters and I just did not understand why I was doing this whatsoever. I couldn't get anything to work on my own laptop for one thing, like I had no knowledge of how to even like install Visual Studio or how to install the dependencies for Java and Python and all these other things that we were learning. I didn't even know like what variables were. I didn't know what booleans were. I didn't I didn't understand or grasp any of this. We had to do tests every few months and I honestly just cheated. I just opened it up in a different window. I was just so upset about 
what was going on. I probably should have just quit and changed over to something else at that time, but I did stick with it for the entire year. And I remember there were some group projects that I was a part of and I just did not grasp any of the concepts. I would just completely shut myself away. There was people in the project trying to talk to me. I remember someone came to my door and I literally just swore at them, slammed the door and told them to leave me alone and don't ask me about it again. I was in such a bad headspace. I remember my parents came to visit me and we went for a walk around town and I was just so depressed and miserable the whole time. And I honestly felt at the time like they just regretted coming to see me and it was just such a horrible feeling. So I mustered up the courage to go and speak to someone at the university and tell them I was not getting anywhere with this. I had like a month left to complete all the assignments and I hadn't even started. I was in such a depressing spiral. I couldn't even face booting up Visual Studio Code or even attending the lectures. I was just getting so down about the whole thing. I just locked myself away in, in my room and just played games and watched anime all day every day and that was just my life for like the past six months, uh, the first year of uni. I'd just given up, honestly. I'd completely given up with everything. And yeah, I remember even like crying myself to sleep some nights. It was horrible. It really, really was. I didn't have any of the knowledge and I couldn't gain any of the knowledge because they were just going way too fast for me. They were already talking about things like matrices, tables and like A-level plus maths and I just could not wrap my head around even the most simple concepts and I just felt stupid honestly. So it was really upsetting so I spoke to someone. Hello? You caught me halfway through recording a video. All right, I'm back. I bought some cookies and now let's move on to year two at university where I was much happier, but still not entirely on the right track. So to start off, changing to the game design course was definitely a good idea. I had the option to either go into year two or back into year one and basically restart my three years of university from the beginning. And I'd already moved into a house with some of my friends from my previous year as well. And although the year didn't go very well, I did make some good long lasting friendships, some of which are still around today. So it wasn't all for nothing. Anyway, in second year, it was kind of more like college. And I was still a little bit grumpy about not actually making anything playable. So in this course, I ended up doing things like learning how to use Unreal Engine. I spent a lot of time then making a level set in a volcano. And there was a lot of making multiplayer maps and making like interactive elements of the levels where you'll hit a trigger and the camera will like sweep around and they show you how to do cutscenes and things like that. It was pretty fun. It was definitely a lot more fun for me than doing the programming in the year before. But I was still annoyed that I wasn't really building anything playable. And by the end of that new first year, I still hadn't really made any progress with my game dev journey and I still had nothing to show for it either, outside of just random essays and going to lectures and things like that. So in year two, things improved again very slightly. So there was a course in year two that I did called Experimental and basically you were put into small teams and actually finally making proper playable games this time in the Unity game engine. And they were absolutely awful, don't get me wrong. I still had no idea what I was doing, but I was just happy to make something playable at least. And I do actually have video evidence of that as well. I have this awful fighting game here, which barely functions. And also this firefighting game here, which uh, I never actually got around to actually making the fire go out. So again, it barely functions, but I, w I was just happy to actually have something interactive that I could actually interact with myself. But the rest of that time was doing things like reverse engineering game design elements and making design documents, which I really enjoyed doing. There was a lot of creative writing, which I really enjoyed as well. And that year, I also attended my first game jam. And this is back when they were in person. So you would stay there for 24, 48 hours and you would all work on a game together. So we worked on a game as our group called Eye for an Eye and I was basically the project designer for that. So I came up with the concept of the game and someone else programmed it. Someone else made the art and I had a great time doing that. The end result was interesting to say the least, but it was definitely the first kind of time that I felt like I'd actually produced something that actually mattered and that you could actually play from start to the finish. So that was really cool. The year after that was basically more of the same and I don't really have much to show from this time. It wasn't really until the third year when I finally got into my element and that is because this was part of the final project where you can basically choose to do anything you want. So I mixed the fact that I really wanted to make something playable 
and my love for storytelling and writing and I came up with something called Quantum Shift and I just loved making that so much. That was the first time since I'd started my game dev career about five years prior that I actually felt engrossed in what I was doing and I actually felt like I, I could make some meaningful progress with it as well. In fact, I made way too much progress and by the end of that, my final year dissertation was just insane. The scale of it was massive. They said they couldn't even open it, it was so big so I had to split it into two different actual documents in order to send it to them. And I ended up getting a first as well, I did put so much time and effort into that. To the point of not even wanting to sleep because I was too busy writing the script and script in the game in RPG Maker and just learning how all that worked and I had an amazing time doing so. And then at GradX, which is kind of the thing where you show off your project after you've finished everything at the end of the year before you graduate, I got to show it off in front of people and I do have one relic from that time left over. It is falling apart, but here on this cardboard cutout, which has lost all its stick, is one of the main characters. So I had my little booth set up. I had a description about the story for the game. I had headphones there and I had a controller and people could just play this like 10 minute demo of the game and it came across really well. And I made some great friends online around that time as well. I joined some RPG Maker forums and I got to make friends with people like Laura Shigihara and Ken Gao and all the people in that community. And it was just a great time and I had an incredible time using RPG Maker. And then uni finished. I didn't know what to do with myself and I came back home. So now for the next section, which is into the real world, I guess. So when I came back from uni, it was always my intention to keep on making games no matter what happened. I did take a look at the beginning for some jobs in the games industry, but they were either things that I felt too inexperienced to even apply for in the first place, like some of the gameplay programming jobs, or they were jobs in QA or social media, and I was just not interested in getting into that. I wanted to get into it to make games, not to help someone else make their game or to promote someone else's game if that makes any sense not that i've got anything against those kind of jobs it just wasn't what i wanted to do with with myself so in the end after working in a few various different random factories and things i got a job at a company as an it graduate this is when things take another turn for the worse because when i started at this company it was honestly the worst four or five months to begin with that i'd ever experienced I was depressed. I was actually depressed. I would... Basically, I, I went into this role as an application developer to begin with, as one of the graduate things, and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Like I said, I wasn't very good at programming. I still wasn't. They were asking me to program these databases, and I had no clue whatsoever. No one had anything for me to do. I sat and watched someone for a while, and then I was just trying to pass the time. I was literally scrolling through the calendar in Outlook. I was, I just had nothing to do at all. And then about two months in, I asked the manager in that area whether he could like get something that was a bit more suited to me because I'll be there for the long term. So I need something to do. I can't just sit here doing absolutely nothing because I don't understand how to make applications and no one's teaching me. So imagine, uh, Imagine the uh, look on my face when he turned to me after I'd asked that and he said, what do you mean you're staying around? Aren't you here on work experience? He didn't even know I was getting paid. He just thought I was there to see what they did. So that was the first of many blows at the beginning of my corporate career. And it just got worse and worse from there. So for the, for the next three months that I was in that department, I would basically pretend that I had meetings in different places and literally just go and hide in the toilets and or just like go for a walk around around town and come back to work a few hours later and no one would even notice that I'd gone. It was genuinely a very very upsetting time and I'm really surprised thinking back on it that I didn't just quit right then and there but I didn't know what else I could fall back on and I didn't want to just give up because this was my first experience properly in the working world so I stuck with it for two years and nothing really improved that much. I was there on a graduate scheme so I was rotating around these different areas but during those two years in my frustration I started writing some ideas for games that I wanted to make and although I was still completely incompetent with programming I did find a game engine that I could attempt to work with. It was called Stencil and it was kind of like a replacement for Flash in a way. So 
It's not as complex as Unity, but you can kind of make whatever you want in it. So it's more complex than RPG Maker, but it's less complex than Unity. And I came up with a really simple idea where you just roll a donut around and collect some sweets. And the idea came to me just because there was always loads of donuts and sweets at work that people would like bring in for their birthdays and things. So I made this little concept for a game called Super Donuts and I thought it would take maybe a month or two to finish. So I started working on that in the evenings and I was feeling quite good about it. I was happy to actually make something for myself and to kind of take my mind off how bad work was going. So. I started working on that. It took a lot longer than I was expecting. It actually took me another two years to finish that game. So amongst the depressing nature of my actual job, pretty much every day after work, if I wasn't making a video, I'd be on stencil trying to come up with something, you know, something playable. And I finally released it. It came out on iOS and Android and no one cared. It got released. The next day it was like 20th on the list, the next day it was like at number 90 in the iOS gaming app chart and then the next day it was like 200 and it disappeared. I made a grand total of about 5 sales I think outside of the codes that I'd sent to friends and family so I made about £10 maybe overall across iOS and Android. Um, someone left a one star review with no comments on day one on Android so it basically just disappeared off the store completely and I never got any new downloads after that. It was such a upsetting time for me. I'd put two years of my life into making this game and no one cared. No one played it, no one bought it. Those that did play it maybe played a few levels because I could see like how long people had played it for or what their score was. There was only one person that actually played it all the way to the end. So it felt like a massive amount of wasted effort and wasted time on my part and the fact that I was using stencil to make it in as well kind of felt pointless because I still hadn't learned anything about programming and at this point I was about three years removed from university so I'd spent about three years in my eyes I'd spent three years and got absolutely nowhere so I was back at square one and at that point in 2017 after the game was released I just gave up game dev completely. I was just done. I felt like there was nothing I could do, there was nowhere I could go with it, so I waited a few more years and then the itch to try and make something kind of came back. So I downloaded Unity and I tried playing around with that but I just could not get anywhere. I wasn't in the right headspace. It was very very challenging for me. I tried and tried and tried, I really did try, and by that time I'd moved into my own flat as well, so I had a little bit more time on my hands. YouTube was doing really well, and I was actually making weekly videos, like the one you're watching right now. So I'd been making weekly videos, I'd been putting basically all of my time and effort in into the YouTube channel after work, because I couldn't deal with work anymore, I really really was starting to hate it. I was hating going into the office every day. I was hating the fact that I would have to pretend to look busy for eight hours before I could come home and work on something that I cared about. So at the, in the back of my mind that entire time I was still thinking I really want to make a game because that's what I really care about. YouTube is just something that I did because I thought it was a lot easier than making games basically. So that's why I'm still here today and I do love making videos but that's not, you know, making videos isn't what I wanted out of life. It kind of is now but that's beside the point for this. Anyway. Around 2019, I really started attempting to make games again, but I made the fatal mistake of trying to do that and focus my attention on that while still focusing my attention on YouTube, while also focusing my attention on, you know, living in the flat and doing that up, while also focusing my attention on trying to get somewhere at work that I actually wanted to be because I was still really depressed at work. It, work just got worse and worse and worse. and. Maybe I'll do a podcast or a blog post about my experience in the corporate world, but my god, those first four or five years were just awful in so many different ways I'm not going to get into now, but basically, I tried using Unity again, I tried using Godot, I tried using Unreal, I could not get anywhere, I was getting so stressed out, I was putting so much time and effort into it. I've got some notebooks back here from when I was like trying to understand how to use the game engines and literally every day after work I would come, I would watch tutorials, I would write notes here and they are very detailed notes, like I did go into a lot of detail about it but I just couldn't get anywhere. I was getting so frustrated with myself. 
And then something really bad happened, which ended up with me going to the doctors and basically having to change my entire outlook on everything because I got so burnt out, I got so anxious that I just woke up in the middle of the night one night and had a full-blown panic attack, an anxiety attack. I felt like I couldn't breathe. I honestly felt like I was going to die. I didn't know what was happening. I kind of stumbled out of bed and just laid on the floor in the bathroom and honestly thought that was my last day on earth. It was, it was scary. It was very, very scary. And basically it boiled down to just being overwhelmed and overworked and overstressed with everything that was going on. And from that moment on, I decided to give up on game dev completely. So for the next six years after that, I didn't even think about making a game again. I was completely done. I was honestly worried about my health and about my mental well-being. It was, it was such a horrible time, but uh, I don't really want to go into it any more than that. So let's leave that there for now and let's move on to where we are today. So where we are today with game dev, I'm being very careful because I do not want to end up in the same situation where I was before. But since that time, I have actually started programming for work. And you'll be happy to know as well that since that time, since those horrible few years at my old company where I was just being passed around to different managers every few months, different companies got bought out and shut down and it was a disaster basically. I managed to actually apply for a job on my own and get out of that situation. And now I'm doing something that's at least more in line with what I enjoyed in my old company. It's still not what I'd prefer to be doing, but it's definitely a lot better than where I was before. So I feel like I'm in a much better headspace. I also now have my own house instead of living in the flat, which came with its own list of many, many issues and many stressful things that probably added to those panic attacks that I was having back then. And that wasn't just a one-off incident either. I would wake, in the wake up in the night quite regularly back then and just feel like I couldn't breathe. And I even had it driving home from work one day and it was really, really scary. So I'm in a much better headspace today than I was back then and I'm taking it very carefully. I'm not going to burn myself out anymore. And YouTube is still my main priority and it probably always will be. But there was something this year that got me back into it and I'm really happy to say that I joined the GMT Game Jam. Hey everyone, so as you can see behind me, this weekend is the Game Makers Toolkit Game Jam. And I've actually got the house to myself this weekend, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to try and learn Godot properly. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time, and building a game to fit this theme seems like the perfect time to try it out. So let's see what I managed to get done over the next three days. DD stands for Gandalf Script? Green Day script? Catalinium? We might never know. We'll start with the things that are considered to be most important for beginners, and then move on to more abstract programming concepts as we progress. So hopefully you'll be able to use this as a reference manual. So I finally had the time to sit down and properly work out how to program games, how to get something up and running, how to publish it on itch.io, and I was really happy with the result, and I was really happy as well that when I wasn't thinking about YouTube and when I wasn't thinking about work, that I could properly focus 100% on building this game, and I really did get into the flow state, which I hadn't felt since I was making my final year project way back in 2014, which was 10 years ago at this point, so it's been such a long overdue feeling, and I felt so happy to be back in that headspace again, Hey everyone, it's day two, and I actually stayed up quite late last night to work on the game. I actually introduced these rotating saw blades that come up from the bottom of the screen to kill the character. So now we actually have a way to restart the levels. It was kind of a workaround because I wasn't sure what to do when you get stuck underneath the blocks. There wasn't really a way of killing the character off and restarting the, the game. So I thought, if you have something constantly coming up from the bottom of the screen to attack you, then that might solve that issue. I also started working on on a ladder so that is today's job to see whether I can get the ladder working. Oh I also found out a much easier way of animating the things as they're going across the conveyor belt into the screen. Instead of using the animation player where you sort of draw in the different points I found something called a path follow I think it's called. You can see I've been taking a lot of notes as I've been going as well and I'll show you some of these. There's some of my other ideas. We've also got a demolition ball and if you want to play the game that I ended up coming up with for the Game Jam, then check the link in the description. It's called Construction Chaos, and it was basically like a little Tetris-style platformer where you have to scale a construction site, and I had a lot of fun making it. 
And there is one other thing that I wanted to mention in this video, and that is the fact that I've actually decided to try and bring Super Donuts back to life on the PC. And now that I've got a much bigger audience, hopefully more people will get to enjoy it. It's been a massive undertaking to get this up and running again, and there were so many things wrong with it. I was basically using an older version of the engine, the game was like a few versions outdated from even when it got uploaded to the App Store because of weird conflicts and I've moved PCs like three times since then so some files were missing. But I'm very happy to say that it's almost complete. I'm not going to give a specific date for when it's actually ready to go live yet because I don't want to put any pressure on myself whatsoever. But just be glad to know that it is coming back at some point and I've also now started working on some new game ideas as well. Just very preliminary at the moment, but I do have another notebook here with some game dev ideas in, and I'm gonna be careful about it because I really do not want to get into the same situation. But you'll be happy to know that I am in a much better headspace, and if I do do it again, I'm in a better position just in terms of my programming abilities to actually do it without getting frustrated and giving up like I did every other time I attempted it. Anyway, this has been a very strange video, so if you're still here at the end, thank you so much for sticking with me all the way through this. I didn't even know whether I was going to make this video or not, so thank you. I hope you enjoyed the story time. Check out some of the random games and projects that I have made over the years on my itch.io page. I'll put the URL there or check it out in the description. And I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye.